everyone, and welcome to another edition of Lancaster Safety's Webinar Wednesdays. If this is your first time attending one of our webinars, first off, welcome. Lancaster Safety is an award-winning nationwide OSHA compliance firm. We hold these free safety webinars on a monthly basis to help spread the word about the importance of safety. When it comes to OSHA knowing all the rules and regulations, people can often become overwhelmed, and that's where we can help. Today we want to start by helping to clarify a particularly overwhelming topic for some people and that's regarding what training topics are required. We'll also get into discussing how often retraining is needed. Now we can't go into every topic for every company out there because there are a lot of people attending from different industries. So please feel free to contact us at the end of our presentation for a free phone evaluation where one of our consultants can go through a questionnaire with you and together decide what topics are needed. I quickly wanted to introduce myself. My name is Adam Burns and I'll be assisting our presenter today with this webinar. Andrew Panchik is one of our consultants that helps companies on a weekly basis by evaluating what safety hazards they face and he then determines what OSHA training topics are applicable to their uh, specific businesses. Thanks, Adam. It's great to be here. If there's a topic or question that you have, feel free to contact him after the webinar for clarification at 888-403-6026. Now let's get started. Some of the key points that we're going to be discussing today are what training topics are required initially, annually, and periodically. Another is what employees need to attend the training different ways to provide the training, training requirements, and benefits of training on topics that are not required. I'd also like to note that the information and training requirements that are outlined in this presentation are for informational purposes only. It is crucial to review OSHA's regulations in full to determine if additional training requirements apply to your employees and company. If you have additional questions at the sub summation of this presentation, give LSCI a call and we'll be there to answer. That brings us to our first Insta Safety Quiz question. It's a true and false. If your company is inspected by OSHA and you didn't know that the employees needed to be trained on a specific topic, OSHA will not hold you responsible as long as you are acting in good faith. Again, that's true or false. All right, guys, uh, we're going to give you one more second here, and we're going to give you the answer. So, Andrew, if you want to go ahead and elaborate. Yeah, the correct answer is false. OSHA must hold companies responsible for complying with the rules and regulations, including required safety training. As Thomas Jefferson said in 1787, ignorance of the law is no excuse in any country. If it were, the laws would lose their effect because it always can be pretended. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, the next thing uh, you we're going to go into is what training is required. Yeah, this is a, a topic that gets talked about a lot when I, I deal with our clients here. Uh, OSHA requires that employers provide training for all applicable occupational hazards that employees may be exposed to in the workplace in a language and vocabulary that all workers can understand. Make note that any company that has employees who speak different languages needs to have either an, an interpreter, present for the training, or have multiple training sessions conducted in the different languages. In addition to trainings, written programs, materials, and signage needs to be in a language that employees can understand if they don't speak or understand English. And this is where LSCI can help with our bilingual trainers on board with us. So you can contact us for more information if you're in this tough spot. Perfect. So you might be thinking, uh, so I work in the office. Do I really need to sit there and uh, do all these trainings? Andrew, can you elaborate a little bit on if they do? Absolutely. So yes, office personnel needs to have training too, but they only need to be trained on areas where they are exposed to hazards in the workplace. 
employees working in the field or in a manufacturing plant will likely be exposed to more hazardous conditions and therefore need more training. Training should be conducted constantly to ensure employee safety. Does that make sense? It does. That makes complete sense. And it's also a great way to ensure that all employees are properly trained. We actually just had our annual uh, training here at LSCI last month, and it was very beneficial. And even for myself, because I primarily work in the office. Excellent. Just to show you here a helpful chart listing popular safety and health training topics along with the training frequency that OSHA requires. Uh, we'll be reviewing the in initial, annual, and periodic training requirements like you mentioned in more detail shortly, but just wanted to give you a sneak peek at some of our resources. This chart was put together by one of our consultants in order to simplify the whole question about this webinar, what to train and how often. So contact LSCI if you'd like to uh, obtain a free copy, or if you notice in the bottom right corner here, you can download this flyer instantly. So you can go ahead and click that area if you'd like. Here is just showing a list of OSHA's training topics that are required to be trained initially. This means upon hire or initial assignment of a new job or process, Keep in mind that the initial training isn't the end. Employees should be trained on these topics as they apply to their exposure to hazards in the workplace. Additional or refresher training, so to speak, should also be conducted annually or periodically based on OSHA's requirements. So LSCI does have a broad spectrum of clients across the country, from construction companies to manufacturing plants to veterinary offices and more. One of the biggest struggles that companies face is meeting with OSHA's initial training requirements. While it is difficult to sacrifice manpower and spend the first few days of hire in training, it is even more difficult to deliver a devastating phone call to an employee's family about an accident. So part of our service is really helping you out so LSEI can diligently work to develop an initial new hire training program that offers an introduction to safety in the workplace for your employees. This slide here highlights uh, some of the training topics that are required to be reviewed on an annual basis. To some companies, annual training might sound like a lot, but when you consider all the safety hazards that might be present at the time, annual training really only covers the basics of what is needed. In short, LSCI recommends more frequent trainings throughout the year. There are also several factors to take into consideration when planning your company's annual training, such as higher risk industry, employees' retention and comprehension level, and the logistics of production downtime. So, Andrew, when you say high risk industries, what industries might that include? Great question. Employees working in industries such as construction, manufacturing, waste treatment, and other industries that are classified as high risk due to the type of hazards that employees are exposed to, the injury data, and other factors. Due to the increase in severity of hazards, it is crucial to ensure that employees are receiving adequate training and at a more frequent interval if necessary. All right, let me ask you this. What are employee retention and comprehension and comprehension level is going to be like? Good question, Adam. This is always a big concern for employers. So take a moment to ask yourself, how much do you recall from that morning meeting or even remember last week's afternoon conference call? If you're one of the lucky ones, you might remember everything. But having materials or handouts or fact sheets, I always tell people, makes a world of a difference for comprehension and retention. As an employer, it's important to understand all employees' learning styles and comprehension levels are not equal. While you may have a four-hour safety training that may be beneficial for some employees, others may be lost after an hour. You get what I'm saying? Utilize materials such as handouts, fact sheets, and quizzes to encourage employee involvement and discussion. Not only is this beneficial during the training, but it also provides employees with materials to take with them as reminders. Some people don't like the idea of quizzing employees on the spot, but it is a great tool to determine 
employee comprehension level. Try passing out a quiz to complete individually or in small groups, and then review the information as a whole. This allows employees to use critical thinking skills on their own, but doesn't single anyone out when reviewing the information. Those actually all sound like really good suggestions. Uh, now that we're talking about logistics of production downtime, this can also be a pretty big concern for employers. We understand that stopping production completely for or for any period of time can uh, be out of the question for some companies. Uh, circling back to the employee retention factor, a four, uh, four plus hour training session may not be the most logical idea for all companies. Andrew, what are your recommendations here? Well, fortunately, LSCI annual trainings can be spread out throughout the year and broken up into smaller sessions. Um, I always tell clients, remember, there's 365 days a year, so we can squeeze in either a half day or even a full day of on-site training. Um, we're flexible with that, so we really work with your schedule to get those on the calendar. Um, for an example, a company could train on hazard communication in January for all employees, for, for that matter. Um, there could be multiple sessions, so only a few employees are pulled away at one time. So this allows for a shorter training session focused on one topic, which increases the employee's retention and comprehension level. Because remember, you know, you're trying to keep everybody awake and their attention span is more focused throughout the training. So sometimes breaking it up can be a, a great benefit than eight hours at a time. Periodically, in this case, means training that is required at least once a year or at a specific frequency, such as forklift certification. So listed above are some of OSHA's safety training topics that are required to be reviewed at a periodic frequency. Recommended. So now that we've reviewed what is required, let's talk about what is recommended. OSHA's training requirements cover initial assignment, annual basis, and more frequently if necessary. But as we previously discussed, just because an employee has been trained once doesn't mean that they are safe for life. Refresher trainings is also recommended and sometimes even necessary. There are a few factors to keep in mind that strongly result in retraining outside of OSHA's initial, annual, or periodic requirement. Some of these examples are after an accident or if an employee is injured, when new equipment or processes are introduced. So if you have a new forklift model or some type of new equipment that a lot of employees are not familiar with. If new personnel are introduced to a work process that will affect other. So LSCI strongly recommends conducting annual refresher training on all applicable topics for all employees as a step above the requirement. So what employees need to attend the training? The short answer is everyone. All employees need to be trained on the applicable hazards that they are exposed to because every person's safety does matter. There are some exemptions, but it is still the employer's responsibility to create a workplace free from recognized hazards, and training is one of the key factors to eliminating these hazards, of making sure your employees know what to do. As mentioned before, training is not a one-size-fits-all aspect. Every employee does not need to be trained on every topic, like we mentioned with office personnel. Only what applies. So training for employees working in the office near the manufacturing plant floor will differ from, them, from those who are actually working on the plant floor. For example, an office employee who has minimal exposure to forklift traffic will have a reduced amount of training, training than someone who operates and works around the equipment all day long. And a lot of times I get this question, well, how do we schedule training? So a lot of times that we, I recommend having all of your employees sit in, in the training and we go over all the topics that apply to everybody first, and then we dismiss them as we start knocking out all the topics. So the ones that don't apply, you could di dismiss those employees. So we recommend training all office and personnel on the following topics, employee rights and responsibilities, hazard communication, emergency action plans and fire safety, personal protective equipment, 
bloodborne pathogens, and lastly, ergonomics. Uh, so what if employees miss a training? That's also a great question. So we understand there are a few factors that play an essential role in organizing the training session, such as production, available personnel, classroom size. Uh, so we'd like to work with you. A lot of times I'll see what other days work throughout the year um, just to really ensure that all logistics are ironed out so the appropriate employees are trained on the applicable topics in an efficient manner. So if an employee misses a scheduled training, what can you do? Makeup training can be scheduled. We offer online new hire training. So this is conducted through a go-to meeting with a live trainer. Also in the back of every program, there is a summary document that can be utilized as an outline when reviewing the written programs. Training logs are also provided to certify that the training did take place. We've also mentioned LSCI's new hire training earlier today, but I'll review the service in more detail now. Um, this includes an introduction to safety and an overview of your company's written program. So all of the programs put together in the summary. Uh, the training usually takes about one to two hours based on how many topics there are in workplace hazard to, to really cover throughout the session. Uh, you can have as many employees as you'd like to attend the training, and they can be in different locations. So the best part about this, as I mentioned before, is conducted online with a live trainer. This provides an interactive learning environment that allows employees to ask questions and have a discussion. The other part is all you need is the internet, a phone or a computer, so everybody could work remotely uh, from a construction site, for, for example, and access the training that way. The trainings are really beneficial to our clients. It starts things out on the right foot, and more importantly for the new hires, it shows that the newly hired employees, that their employees care about their safety and that they are doing things right. That's a very good point. That's uh, always something nice to have. Uh, next, we're going to be discussing what methods of training are available. I'd assume that the in-person uh, with a live trainer option is the most common, isn't it? Yes, you're correct. It's definitely the most efficient, popular, and recommended route of training uh, the in-person with a knowledgeable safety professional. Throughout today, we discuss a lot of variables that can make the logistics of training difficult, but the most important factor here to remember is that training content is received and understood. LSCI strongly promotes live in-person and hands-on training um, just for the fact that it is one of the most effective methods for training. Um, so having an LSCI live in-person hands-on training will provide employees with the opportunity to ask questions, like I said, create discussion, brainstorm together to reinforce the training content. Fortunately enough, we have training um, safety trainers across the country that specializes in OSHA compliance and have decades of experience from retired OSHA officials to certified safety professionals, so we have you covered. So it looks like next on the list is the supervisor train the trainer. Is that an effective training method as well? Absolutely. If you're looking for a bit more flexibility with trainings for your employees, you can increase your company's in-house periodic trainings by having this supervisor's train. This allows your supervisors to have a heightened awareness of safety hazards, keep a closer eye on unsafe practices in the workplace, and conduct refresher trainings when needed. These types of periodic in-house trainings will, again, reinforce the training content and, and the importance of safety to all employees. Supervisor training and then employer's trainer employees, this is also referred to as train the trainer and is especially popular for forklift certifications, as you may already know. So next up is online trainings, which we just discussed regarding new hires. Uh, what about online training for specific subjects, or uh, what other online training is available for them, Andrew? Yeah, we discussed LSCI's online new hire training option, but did you know that we can also conduct full trainings online for any topic that doesn't have a hands-on training emphasis? We also have our webinar service, which is why you're here today. While we don't under, 
always consider our webinars as formal OSHA trainings on specific regulations. They are designed to provide you with supplemental information to improve your company's safety program and culture. Again, I want to just stress the point that online module training is not recommended. So it looks like last on the list is videos. Uh, so with sites like YouTube and other social media outlets being so popular, I'd assume that videos could be a good way to get employees' attention, correct? Yeah, while it isn't recommended to put your employees in a room and hit play on a safety video from YouTube, videos can be an important supplemental tool to your training program. Short videos that include factual information can easily be incorporated into the training to spice things up and take away from lengthy sessions. Keep in mind that videos should be from credible sources. A quick search on YouTube may not elicit the best content to show your employees. So, uh, Andrew, it looks like we're going to talk a little bit about the pros and cons of conducting uh, online training versus an in-person training. I know that there are a ton of online providers out there, and really, who could blame anyone for wanting to make safety training as convenient as possible? Uh, it's also cost-effective, too. So can you discuss the uh, downside of online training? Of course. Well, let's start with the bad news. OSHA and also Lancaster Safety here do not recommend online training. Although this may be a, a cheaper option and when you're looking around for on or any type of safety training, this really isn't covering everything that you need for your company. This is direct from OSHA's website. Self-paced interactive computer-based training can serve as a valuable training tool in the context of an overall training program. However, use of computer-based training by itself would not be sufficient to meet the intent of most of OSHA's training requirement. The online training that we conduct is live, which is a plus, again, a live trainer, but we still encourage our clients to schedule an in-person training as well, and here's why. Unsupervised trainings can cause some liability issues for employers. Think of it this way. If you have kids that don't like to brush their teeth, you want to make sure you observe them doing it so it actually gets done and they get their teeth clean, correct? So if we put this into an adult safety training scenario and had tired employees who completed an online training session unsupervised, let's say the employees slept through the online training, but signed off saying they were trained and then later down the road had an accident. Guess what? The employer would still be responsible. Now, if that employee was present in an in-person training with a live trainer that asked and answered questions and felt the employees had a good grasp on the topics presented, presented training documentation could be handed over to OSHA and the employer would be looked at as making a good faith effort in keeping their employees safe. Now, we're not saying here that they would be exempt from an OSHA penalty altogether because it would come down to the scenario itself. There are circumstances, but you can bet that OSHA would look more favorably at the situation if an in-person training was conducted. Also, in OSHA's eyes, documentation is key. It is extremely important to maintain all training logs in a safe place as well as a copy. You can reprint programs and policies, but you can't replace original training documentation. So overall, when you ask that question, live trainings are going to be more interactive and are performed by certified trainers that can answer safety questions on the spot. The only cons are actually having to schedule the training, which we understand takes time out of your day. We understand it's hard to take all that time to really have that training conducted but like we said previously, no work or production should ever be the reason to not take the time to be safe. Absolutely. I couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, so next we're going to touch base uh, on OSHA 10-hour and 30-hour trainings. So I'm sure everybody is asking, well, what are they? Andrew, can you elaborate a little bit? Yeah, so th this is one of the hot topics um, that we get a lot of call-ins about for our clients. OSHA's outreach 10 and 30-hour trainings cover the recognition, avoidance, abatement, and prevention of workplace hazards. 
The course also provides information regarding workers' rights, employer responsibilities, and filing a complaint. The 10-hour class is designed to provide employees with an awareness level of safety and health hazards in the workplace. The 30-hour class is typically provided to supervisors as it provides a greater depth and variety of training on an expanded list of topics associated with workplace hazards in each industry. OSHA provides authorized trainers with specific procedures and materials to use for each industry's training program level. So are they required? Great question. So in general, no, they are not required. But there are some states that have their own 10 and 30 hour OSHA requirements. See our blog post to see if your state is listed. According to OSHA, the outreach training does not meet any OSHA training requirements. Employers are responsible for training workers on specific hazards of their job as listed in our previous presentation slide. Here is another free download for you today. This printout basically breaks down the subject requirements for 10 and 30 hour training. This one pictured is specifically for con the construction industry, but we do have uh, a picture for the general industry as well. And so you can download this here on our website at lancastersafety.com forward slash services forward slash onsite dash safety dash training. In addition to the annual and periodic training requirements that we previously discussed, Employees should be retrained, as I mentioned before, after an accident or employee injury, when new equipment or processes are introduced, if new personnel are, are introduced to a work process that will affect others, or if management just deems that additional training is necessary. So since this is an online training, we know this slide regards forklifts will not apply to everybody in attendance today, which is a downfall of online webinars rather than in-person customized training that we normally perform. So quickly, forklift operator certifications and re recertifications are in high demand. Although the train the trainers certifications do not expire, we do not, um, I'm sorry, the forklift operator certifications do. So recertifications must be completed every three years. As always, we recommend that forklift trainers be retrained even though it isn't necessary. This can be conducted at the same frequency as operator recertification or sooner if management deems necessary. Initial training is made up of a combination of formal instruction, which would be um, lectures, discussions, interactive uh, computer learning, videotapes, written materials, Practical training is more like demonstrations performed by the trainer and practical exercises performed by the trainee. Evaluation of the operator's performance in the workplace. Uh, this next section requires refresher trainings to be provided to the operator when the following occurs. Operating the vehicle in an unsafe manner, accident or near miss incident, an evaluation that reveals that the operator is not operating the truck safely, the operator is assigned to drive a different type of truck, or a condition in the workplace changes in a manner that could affect safe operation of the truck. So who should be trained as a forklift trainer? I just want to start out, you are not required to have a forklift trainer, but those who would like to be must have the knowledge, training, and experience to evaluate the operator's competence. It is crucial that any employee who is training others is qualified. In the event of an incident, one of the first questions OSHA will ask is to see employees' forklift training and certification documents. The program is very convenient to be able to certify new operators in-house, especially if you have multiple types of equipment. Many companies have LSEI trained operators and trainers as long as the employees know how to drive and properly operate the equipment. So just keep this in mind though, Adam. We do not teach people how to use the forklift. We make sure they know how to use it safely. 
So I've had companies ask me this question regarding forklift train the trainer program. From a liability standpoint, yeah, sure. some owners are hesitant to forklift train the trainer program. From a liability standpoint, some owners are hesitant to whether or not they should have their supervisor personnel trained in case there was an accident. So the question is that I get is who would be liable between us and their company? The answer is according to OSHA, the company is always liable. OSHA does not issue citations to employees, so that's important to remember. And LSCI recommends that it is our qualified uh, consultant to provide the training. However, the train to trainer program is a lot more convenient for most of our clients that only use us annually. Many companies have us train as many operators as possible and do the train to trainers for supervisor. That is always a good option. So general awareness training, if employees work near or are exposed to certain equipment but are not the ones running or creating the hazards, then it is recommended they have awareness level training on, ha on the specific hazards. So a good example is scaffolding, cranes, aerial lifts, forklifts. We provide a general awareness, which is an overview of hazards that employees would need to have instead of an operator training. Even if the employer does not own the equipment, employees still need to be trained. So clients ask us all the time, you know, we're about we're a construction company and we're about to do a job out here in a, on one of our work sites and there's a crane there. It's not our property, we won't be operating, but we are going to be around a train. So this is this awareness training is basically to understand that your employees should still receive training on um, for example, if there's a crane on site, they should receive general awareness safety training on cranes so they understand the, the uh, exposed hazard and what they're getting into before performing their job on the work site. So here's a, another question for you, Andrew. Uh, what are the benefits of training on topics that are not required? I'd assume a lot of companies would opt out of training if they didn't, if they didn't have to train on that subject. Am I correct? Well, Adam, that can be true, but oftentimes employers might find themselves struggling with initiating a good safety culture, where everyone from the newest employee to the top management team are on board with safety. Regularly, trainings provide safety refreshers for employees and keep safety at the forefront of their thinking. Employees really need to be thinking about safety at work, not just attending a training. So it can also help employees understand a certain process or recognize a potential hazard. There's really a lot of benefits to training on topics that aren't required by OSHA. Companies sometimes don't think about going beyond training on OSHA's requirements. So if you notice on our website, this is how we came up with our company's new slogan, taking safety beyond the standard. This really says it all. Be as safe as possible, not because you have to, but because you want to keep everyone safe. Absolutely. Uh, now we're going to take a quick quiz and I will have Andrew answer the questions. So uh, Andrew, first question, uh, what does OSHA require outreach training? I hope everyone attending today was paying attention because we did go over this topic earlier. The answer to this question is no, it is voluntary, but there are some states that have their own requirement. These states include Connecticut, Massachusetts, Missouri, Nevada, New Hampshire, New York, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, and West Virginia. We did put out a blog earlier this year. Um, feel free to contact me or go onto our website to find it, the blog article is Federal OSHA 10 and 30 hour requirements. So outreach training does not meet any OSHA training requirement. Think of it as a one size fits all type of training. Again, my clients are surprised when I recommend a, a company a specific training based on the hazards their employees encounter over a 10 or 30 hour training. Employers are responsible for training workers on specific hazards for their job. Perfect. And it looks like the second question is, do all employees need to be trained initially? 
This should be a more obvious answer, but yes, employees do need to be trained initially. And remember that initially means upon hire or new uh, initial assignment of a new job or process. So again, keep in mind that initial training isn't the end. Employees should be trained on these topics as they apply to their exposure to hazards in the workplace. Additional or refresher training should be also conducted annually or periodically based on OSHA's requirements. And that brings us to another Insta Safety Quiz question. Yet again, another true and false. Uh, the question is, the following topics are required annually to be trained on. Fall protection, ladder safety, powered hand tools, arc flash, laser safety, combustible dust, and ergonomics. Again, that's true or false. All right, guys, let's get those answers locked in here. Give you a couple more seconds. And Andrew, if you want to go ahead and elaborate on the answer. So the answer is false because these topics are recommended to be trained based on an employee's exposure. All right, well, uh, looks like that just about does it for us today. Uh, we wanted to thank you for attending today's webinar and hope you learned some things about uh, what OSHA training topics are required. If you need any clarification or would like to set up a, a training with Lancaster Safety, feel free to give Andrew a call at 888-403-6026 and just make sure to ask for Andrew specifically. If you wouldn't mind taking a minute to give our webinar a review today, fill out the star rating prompt after the close of the webinar, or feel free to write us a review on Google, Yelp, or Facebook. We hope you join us again for another safety webinar in the future. We hold these on a monthly basis, and they are all free to attend. Just watch out for our emails uh, to sign up and visit our website at LancasterSafety.com. Again, for me and Andrew, we'd like to thank everyone again for attending and have a safe and wonderful day. Thanks, everybody.